Tonight, Fishburn acknowledges our mistress of ceremonies, Leslie Bryan Ingersoll. Leslie Ingersoll has the very important job of orchestrating the induction ceremony of the National Honor Society and graduation in addition to all her teaching duties. Both events call for meticulous attention to detail for the preservation of traditions and the solemnity of the occasion. The serious focus of each important life event calls for detailed planning and tireless patience in an organization with cadets who only want to accelerate the process and be free. Leslie works with the Corps to execute the refinement and polish that separates Fishburne's graduation from others, and she does it with grace and with ease. In her classroom, this versatile lady teaches technology to a ready audience and to a faculty and staff with their technology questions. Again, her attention to detail makes her solutions to computer problems easy to solve for all of us. During the school year, Mrs. Ingersoll conducts a blood drive with cadets as a National Honor Society project, and the drive is always successful and a newsworthy project. Fishburne is very fortunate to have a person on the faculty who can do this very difficult job of conducting Honor Society inductions and graduation. We appreciate you, Leslie, and we acknowledge your excellence in all contributions to our school. Thank you. and a school administrator, but being at Fishburn is such a wonderful opportunity for me to work with young men who are going to go out and make a big splash in the world. And I love working with Honor Society, and I love working with the graduates especially, and the staff and the faculty there are wonderful people. So thank you very much for this very big surprise. Thank you so much. This is one of the most exciting parts of our program. And without further ado, I introduce our first speaker, a four-year cadet, our battalion commander, who has been accepted at the Naval Academy and at West Point and Wake Forest, <laughs> and has been a pleasure to watch him grow up. Harold McCoo. My name is Harold McHugh and I'm the battalion commander here this year. Some of you have already heard my story, uh, seeing as how this is not my first speech, however I promise there are some new things. Uh, before coming to Fishburne, one day jokingly I told my mother after a fight, why don't you just send me to boarding school? And before I knew it, she was telling me that uh, I was going to military school, gave me a list of options and said you pick which I then chose the one on the hill. I, uh, I started off my fishman journey in the eighth grade, so it was actually five years, but no one needs to tell Ms. Johnson that. Um, <laughs> unmotivated and not wanting to even think of anything related to the military. Once I got out of rat status, which as many of you in here know, sucks, <laughs> I got a little bit of leadership as a team leader and then on to be a squad leader. The following year, I got swooped up by Nurse Brenda and became a medical NCO, which was a great gig, one of my favorite that I've had at Fishburne Military. Um, still not excited to be at Fishburne, I was about to transfer to a different school. My mind was set, my bags were packed, and I was leaving. Until one day, First Sergeant Hensley, or as many of you know, named Top, offered me a position on the color guard. 
which I went on to take. That year as Color Guard Commander was by far my best year at Fishburn. I was with a close group of guys that created a bond like none other, as well as being mentored by a phenomenal man, Todd. Due to this year, or due to this man, as well as the opportunity, my whole view on Fishburn and the military in general changed. I soon saw myself doing well for others instead of myself and for my own personal reasons. The following year I went on to become the Battalion Sergeant Major and learned widespread authority tactics and non-teachable lessons that can only be learned through experience. All these traits and diverse jobs contributed to my endeavors to be and my successes as the Battalion Commander. Looking back on my journey, which was indeed a journey, between the years of drill, ceremonies, being a rat, applying to college, dealing with the food, <laughs> Colonel Cedar. I have learned and experienced things that will not only help me upon going to college, but will carry on with me for the rest of my life. If it were not for Fishburn, I would not have been able to say today that I've gone in, into the Naval Academy, uh, West Point, as well as other high-ranking non-military universities that I have led and helped 180 other cadets who have gone through the same struggles I have. But most importantly, that I've been in a family for the last five years, one that I know will be there for me the rest of my life. For the record, after a long and thought-out decision, I can currently say I will be attending the United States Naval Academy, and for right now, we'll be saying Hello. As Ms. Johnson said, my name is James Wright. I'm a first year cadet at Fishburne Military School. In my first seven months at Fishburne, I had the honor of becoming squad leader in Bravo Company. Before Fishburne, I was born in Heidelberg, Germany, to a major in the United States Army and an English citizen. Because my father was in the Army, in 2003, he found the ground war in Iraq. At that time, my mother developed breast cancer. She, after fighting the disease for five years, she passed away. After my mother passed away, we, uh, my family moved to Seattle. In Seattle, my grades started to slip, and I started to fight with my dad. From my dad's experience in the military, he decided that I would do much better in a more structured environment. So he decided that I needed to go to military school. Me and him looked at many different military schools and decided on Fishburne because it was more organized than the other military schools and had more structure. I, when I came to Fishburn, I saw it as a place to succeed. In the fall, I ran cross country. At my last school, when I ran cross country, I was one of the slower runners on the team. But when I came here, I was I had a drive to succeed, and by the end of the at the end of the season, I led the team at both the conference and the state meets. I've also done better in my classes. At my last school, I had very poor grades, but since coming here, I've been on the honor roll of distinction and I became the captain of the academic team. The academic team competes in the academic bowl, and, which is open to more than 200,000 students worldwide. The events test students' knowledge in English, math, science, <clears throat> current events, and leadership. Under my leadership, the team has made it to the national championship as one of 15 as one of 15 schools from four brigades 316. As Fishburne helped me succeed.
succeed as a person and as a student. I'm looking forward to next year where I'll be able to do the same for the future cadets. to an older student and reciting his history in earning a black name tag, and this new student was 300 pounds. Nick is a believer. <laughs> conversation with him before I'd even enrolled. He asked me what service academy I wanted to attend. <laughs> I said Annapolis Naval Academy. I answered quickly and decisively, but I have to be honest, I didn't know where the answer came from. I never really thought about it before. That day a dream was born, a dream I carry with me every day. The experiences I've had at Fishburne during the last four years are preparing me for a future I dream about. A future that would demand excellence, discipline, leadership, and commitment. I also know that no matter where I go to college, and no matter where my life leads me, I'm in the best place I can be right now. My transformation as a Fishburne cadet began right after I enrolled. I quickly left behind the little boyish kid with no real focus. Like most cadets, my real cadet life started after I had broken out from the rat line into the regular ranks of the cadet corps, which I have to tell you was no easy feat. It was strange at first, but I quickly got the hang of it. During my first year, I made excellent grades, had no tours, and a good discipline record. In eighth grade year, I earned one of the highest positions I could be given to cadets in the grade at the time, the company met in sale for Charlie Company. This would be where my rise to the ranks would begin, when I would learn the meaning of teamwork, like coming to the aid of fallen cadets during long past reviews. I was happy to accept the position, and I enjoyed it immensely, especially with the guidance and love of Mama B who was the head nurse and a mother away for, from home for all cadets. <coughs> During my med and year, I was also invited to train for the junior color guard. I'm still a member of the color guard, and I'm very proud of this honor. We represent the school at important events that bring credit to the school, such as professional baseball games, postings for whole army units and four-star generals, and many other organizations. Also, the battalion staff chooses many of its key leaders from the ranks of the color guard which makes it excellent training for any cadet who wants to become a leader. Fishburne offers many sports opportunities for cadets, such as football, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, and basketball. But I wanted to do something that I had never done before. <clears throat> I wanted to be a member of the famed and distinguished Raiders teams. During my second year, I joined Raiders C team. Raiders require mental and physical endurance, discipline, commitment to intense physical training. In addition, we learned the value of taking care of each other in activities such as litter carry, rope bridge, and rappelling. We're always there for our teammates, and we help each other succeed. The outcome of being on the raid team is a mental and physical discipline. These experiences have helped me make myself stronger than I'd ever been. I'm confident in my physical abilities I can do things I never dreamed I could do. We compete with other schools from all over Virginia in these raider meets. And at the end of the day, when you're dirty and tired, bringing home the gold for Fishburne makes it all worthwhile. I also joined the rifle team, which is one of the single most difficult sports to partake in. My scores have improved with practice, and I hope to continue to improve. Barracks life can be fun also, with up to 180 cadets living side by side crammed in the small area of our barracks. Things can get pretty active. Pranks have been some of the most fun experiences I've ever encountered at Fishburne. Such as eggs behind the radiators or toothpaste on the door handles. When everybody's laughing, it breaks up the day to day routine. Medencio, Color Guard, Raiders, these experiences have helped me mature and become self reliant, just as they have enabled so many other cadets to do the same. Fishburne has been the best thing that's ever happened to me, 
And I can't thank my parents or the staff of Fishburn enough for putting up with me and allowing me to attend such a wonderful and distinguished school. JROTC program. He earned the award of Cadet of the Month and he has lived that description since he came to school. We have already seen his leadership potential. I am the one who turned. I, Joshua Lee Kovac, Cadet Corporal of Fishburn Military School, turned. Away from the evil clutches of Massonet and the Cat. <laughs> this previous summer and first two quarters of the school year, I attended Massonet. Over my time there, I became the equivalent of an old man who was promoted to staff sergeant. I was the poster boy for this school, and still to this day, there are pictures of me on their website. <laughs> but the school had a fatal flaw. Something so great that they even needed to change the name. They slowly but surely removed the military aspect in school. During my last two weeks at Massanutten, I visited a showcase for all military schools in Virginia. The headmaster of Massanutten was there, and, I, and he knew that I did not like his decision to remove the military aspect of the school. However, it was all worth it whenever we made eye contact and I continued on looking at other schools. I came over, shook his hand, and told him that I had come here to consider my future. From this point, I wandered off to see other stands. After about eh, 20 minutes, I came to the Fishburn presentation. I was so impressed by the presentation, and of course, the big burgundy <laughs> and gold folder. <laughs> I knew I needed to take a tour of this wonderful school. So my last week of going to Massanet, and I decided to skip a day. My mom drove me to Fishburn Military School. To be quite honest, I was nervous, just like I am now. <laughs> I got little flurries in my stomach, especially because of what I was told about the school, things like the caliber of the cadets was poor. But when I stepped on the grounds, I beheld a magnificent sight. It wasn't what I saw, but it was what I heard. Cadets' feet hitting the ground at the exact same time as Cadence was called. The absolute silence throughout the formation. Even the kids that were counting off their push-ups made a harmony so beautiful I was transfixed. <laughs> the tour continued. I was shown the lab's classrooms. <laughs> Thank you, alumni. Then in the cadets' rooms. I peered in. The press was perfect. The bed sharply made. The desks neat and clean. We continued back up to the administration building. Back into Mr. Shiflett's office. From there, Colonel Morrison and Flight Lieutenant Frazier happened to stop by and were interested in my story. After a good 15 minutes of me explaining, Colonel Morrison summed it all up. So, you left Massanutten and came to us. After my items were packed up and moved out of Massanutten, I had to wait for the dark ages, finals for the first two quarters, to end before I could appear at Fishburn. At this time, I got cold feet and didn't know what I wanted. My choice? either return to public school or choose to go to Fishburn. I called Colonel Morrison. He understood my feelings and said that he would put me in contact with someone that would answer all of my questions. Later on that day, I received a call from Colonel Morrison telling me that Mr. Gray will be calling in 10 minutes. <laughs> At the time, I had no understanding of who this man was. 10 minutes goes by. Ring. I pick up. Is this Mr. Kobach? <laughs> now I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm quivering. I have no idea what to expect. Of course, my answer. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, sir. <coughs> Another ten minutes passes, and I've asked all the questions I can think of. At this point in time, I'm in love with the school. I was and still am completely sure that this school could help me reach any goal I've ever dreamt of. Later on, I realized that that 10 minutes that Mr. Gray took out of his busy schedule would change my life forever. Four days pass, and I find myself in a car on my way to Fishburn. 
I arrive, turn in my medical records and my cell phone, and go to the TAC office. From there, I receive my room key, regulation book, and my rat rules. I was told that I was in Charlie Company. It was introduced to my TAC, Sergeant Bailey. I lugged the big black bag full of my brand new clothes to room 149. As soon as I take my stuff out, about eight kids burst into the door, all of them throwing around their hands. Of course, it was so I could shake them and introduce myself. The rest of the night, I was helped to set up my room and told how rat status would work and what I had to do. The next day was Sunday. I changed into white over gray, my red paint kind of glaring back. The day dragged on. I was reminded every five seconds about some rule that I was breaking. That night, I heard an announcement. All rats form upon the bricks in PT Dyke. All rats form upon the bricks in PT Dyke. A change in hustle out there to see nine other cadets falling into one long line. About five minutes later, hell begins. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have been, ever been introduced to Big Bertha, but she's the heaviest thing I've ever carried. 600 pounds of rubber and sand carrying her up and down hills and around the school. Keep in mind, it's snowing, there's already about six inches of snow, plus a layer of ice from the previous day. This happened week after week, but that was my last PT. As I left rat status, I realized that being a rat is not to punish you, but to create discipline. It's to create and continue the brotherhood that runs in all of our blood. I've never felt closer to those cadets that were my rat brothers, and I realize that I am now part of the family, our family. I am now a Fishburne Military School cadet.